So lately I've done some videos about the Amazon Renew program that allows you to buy older flagships in 2020 from 2019 and before for a really significantly lower price. And I kept talking about how it'd be great if Samsung had a really like flagship level experience for about $500. Well, now they do. This looks a lot like the A51, but no, it's not. This is the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite. Now, when you hear the name, you think, ah, another budget phone, but it's in the S series. The A series of phones from Samsung are their budget line or their mid-range line. This really is anything but. The price is budget or what we consider budget nowadays. I mean, it's not the $200 phones I've been showing you lately, but for a Samsung S series of phone, this is a darn good deal. And as a matter of fact, with my time with it already, this is one of my favorite Samsung phones I have used this year. And I've used several, like I'm falling in love with this phone, which is crazy. I had no intention of that. Now, is it the perfect phone? No. Are there some drawbacks? Sure. But I think those drawbacks are really small in comparison to what you get out of this phone. And I'm going to tell you all about those things right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listening to, to Travis. <laughs> What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. A couple videos ago, I did the Amazon Renewed series as I talked about before, and some people in the comments asked me to check out the S10 Lite. Now, at first, I was under the, the preconceived notion that, well, this is a budget phone along the lines of the A, and I was wrong. I didn't know this thing actually has the Snapdragon 855 processor in it. Yeah, the same processor as all the other S10s from last year. Now let's just get this out of the way. The Snapdragon 855 processor with eight gigs of RAM and a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. There's some other specs we'll go over, but those are the three main ones. A huge battery, a huge screen, and the processor from last year. This is exactly what I've been asking for. And as I've shown time and time again, the Snapdragon 855 processor is more than enough for this year. Now, the one thing that I will say is, even though a lot of budget phones I've used lately uh, have a lower version of the Snapdragon processor and those have been excellent, the 855 has been like on this other level. It is an absolute beast. And sure, it's not the 865, but this is 500 bucks. Let's talk a little bit about this phone. See, this actually has the same format as the A51 and 71 you may have seen other people review. I even reviewed the A51 at the beginning of this year. It's got the same camera uh, alignment and it's got the glastic, the glastic back that it's not glass, it's plastic and glass, um, that gives it a, a slightly less than premium feel. However, this screen, and this is what trips me out, is the largest of all of the S series. It's 6.7. It's larger than the S10e, it's larger than the S10, and it's even larger than the S10 Plus. Something to think about. People were asking me to compare this against the S10e, but the specs on this thing, this isn't an S10e versus an S10 Lite. I think they're doing a disservice by calling this a Lite. This thing is straight up like an S10. There are some things that it's missing, but if you're okay with the couple of things that are missing, this is a beast phone, and right now will be basically my recommendation for a Samsung phone at this price range. Like, above and beyond the renewed phones that I've done, this will get my recommendation. Now, while it has the same processor as the S10 and S10 Plus, because it came out this year, the assumption is it will get at least one more update than the S10 and S10 Plus will over the next couple of years. Now, that's an assumption on my part. The processor is the same between them, but the, the whole idea behind the updates have been years from release, not processors. So you should get two more years on this. Now, when you start comparing this to the S10 series, you start to see a couple of things. Number one, it's got a bigger screen at 6.7 inch. It's got 128 gigs of storage, a 48 megapixel camera versus the 12 on the S10 series, which is kind of nuts. A 32 megapixel selfie camera comparison to 10 on the S10. And of course, a 4,500 milliamp hour battery versus the 4,100 milliamp hour battery on the S10 Plus. So it's got like everything better. That's just plain better, right? So of course, it's not gonna have everything and it is missing a couple things. It's only missing one thing that I feel like for me is really important and that is wireless charge. This thing does not do wireless charge and that's kind of a bummer which of course means no reverse wireless charge either. It also doesn't have a headphone jack, which the S10 series does. It has no IP rating, which means if you're gonna take it in the shower, you probably shouldn't do that. 
it's got one speaker, so it's not dual firing speakers. So, you know, it's not going to sound quite as good as the S10 or S10 Plus. I mean, again, doesn't bother me at all, but it might for you. A 1080p screen and no telephoto lens, but it does have an extra lens that the S10 series does not have, a macro. And it has a bunch of the video effects and photo effects that you see on those other cameras. That's what makes it so cool. This really is an S10. So for example, take a look at some of these photos with both the regular lens, the wide angle lens, and of course that macro lens, which is super cool. Get really close up and check out the details. Of course, front facing video is really cool. Even with special effects, it's dope. And uh, let's just talk about the fact that it's not stabilized. However, the rear camera is absolutely stabilized. As you can see here, really great quality. It's just exactly what you would expect from a Samsung phone. And again, with eight gigs of RAM and a Snapdragon 855, this thing can go beast mode even on games. Of course, Call of Duty runs smooth as butter. Like this thing can do everything-ish. It doesn't do decks. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of upset about that one because I feel like it should but I guess that's another reason why they call it light. They gave you most of the things you really would need, things in the camera, the battery, and things that people maybe don't use so much, they, they took away. But it does have an AMOLED display and an in-screen fingerprint sensor. Like, I, I don't know, this thing is basically an S10. I'm really hyped about this phone. But for people who don't like long phones, like a OnePlus 7 Pro, which is, this is basically the same length, you might not like this. Personally, I like a bigger screen and I've always wanted a screen bigger than the S10 Plus as when I was reviewing it before, I was saying that I thought that it was just slightly smaller than I would like. This thing is a beast. I love it so much. The battery's lasting all day with no problems. Of course, if you're going super beast mode, 4G hotspotting and watching videos all day while playing games, maybe you don't get through a day, but it's doubtful you're getting through many phones in one day with that type of usage. Now, real quick, let's talk about where this phone lies in the grand scheme of things. First of all, like I said, I love this phone. I'm absolutely recommending it for anyone who doesn't need wireless charge, an IP rating, things like DeX, and that sort of thing. If, it, if you don't need any of those things, 100%, this phone is awesome. It's way beyond what the S10e is, in my opinion, and certainly competes directly against the S10 and S10 Plus. And with the 855 processor, you have a phone that's going to do work for a long time. And I think that the compromises it makes are absolutely fair. A lot of people aren't gonna use some of those other things, but they will use all the camera features. They definitely are gonna use the battery. The bigger screen is amazing. And it makes me think, why did they make a really weird change to the Note 10 Lite? For those of you who don't know, there's a light version of the Note 10, and I didn't get it because it has the Exynos processor, which is made by Samsung. And for most people that are overseas, they know that Exynos processors, at least to this point, have not exactly been excellent. It seems weird. Why didn't they just use the Snapdragon 855 on that phone as well? I don't, I don't really know why. I kind of wish they did because I love the Note series of phones. I would have loved to have picked that up as well. But this to me feels like an almost no compromise phone. I'm super hyped about it. I'm gonna leave a link to buy it in the description below because I absolutely am giving the thumbs up. This phone is legit. At the beginning of the year, I kept saying that the $500 smartphone is where it's at. If a company really wants to make a move and move the needle, they have to go to mid-range and budget range priced phones. And finally, Samsung has done it. Think about this phone when it goes on sale or when it's been out for a while for like close to $400. This thing is a beast. I don't even care about the Pixel 4a at that point. I don't care. Um, you, if you really want a Pixel 4a, really probably what you want is the camera from it. And we all know now you can just sideload the APK that's from the camera. You don't even really need a Pixel 4 anymore. And I'm kind of bored with vanilla Android. I like the uh, One UI 2.0 that's on here. It's such a great phone. I'm just, listen, if I'm sounding like a hype beast, I'm sorry I am. This is a cool phone. I dig it. Samsung, respect. And this just brings up the thought, why hasn't Samsung done this even earlier? Like, this is a great phone. I wouldn't even call it light. I would maybe call it the S11 because to me, it's like, it's a half generation's jump, almost like the S10 and a half or something. I don't know. Regardless of what you call it, I think calling it the light is almost a disservice. And that's reflected in the comments when people saw that I had this phone, they wanted me to directly connect, directly compare it to the S10e. This thing, in my opinion, beats the S10e handily. So why can't Samsung do this more often? I hope that we start to see this light series of phones from Samsung in the future, especially at this price point. 500 bucks, it's hard to beat. The question now is, do you buy this or do you buy the S10e, S10 or S10 Plus? 
They are all on sale as well with not too much price between them and this. If you can get a deal on an S10 Plus and you don't care about the longer screen, obviously there are some things that that thing does that this does not, wireless charging being one of them, DeX being another, and some other various things. However, again, I love this phone. I absolutely recommend it with no hesitation. If you're looking for a phone at a good price, this Samsung's got a winner, they really do. I hope we see more of the Light Series. Tell me in the comments below, what version of phone would you like to see a Light Series of? My guess is the S20 Ultra. An S20 Ultra Lite would be beast mode. Uh, by the way, I want you to see the review I did on the Galaxy S10 Plus, the Renewed Series, right over here. So make sure you check that out, and I'll see you next time. Peace and love, peace and love.